Minister, um, as, you, um, as you know well, there's, uh, there's a lot of people in Ireland very passionate about uh, working with greyhounds in, in different facets, uh, but we have a serious problem with, with greyhound racing in Ireland, and as Indicon said earlier in the year uh, in their report that the IGB were actually unfit for purpose. Now, I know you've made some changes of late, and uh, uh, You've, you've placed some uh, new people uh, to deal with the drug problem, which is haunting the sport. And, uh, but unless we're going to get seriously improved regulation, uh, it's going to be hard to uh, bring back the reputation of greyhound racing. Yes, sir. Yeah. The control administration and regulation of the greyhound industry have the responsibility of board and gone uh, under the Greyhound Industries Act of 1958 and 19. Um, 93. Two statutory committees, born and gone, namely the Control Committee and the Control Appeals Committee, are central to the regulatory process. These committees operate totally independently of born and gone. They're totally independent of born and gone. The Controls and Control Appeals Committee of born and gone were established under the Greyhound Industries Act uh, Regulation 207. Under that legislation, full details of any laboratory findings can only be published at the conclusion of proceedings by the Control Committee and the Controls Appeals Committee. Article 86 of the Greyhound Industries Control Committee and Control Appeals Committee Regulation 207 provides that the Control Committee shall publish its findings in all decisions in the matter it deems fit and that such publications may be delayed subject to appeals procedure. The majority of samples obtained at licensed stadiums are tested for prohibited substance in the National Greyhound Laboratory at Bornegon headquarters in Limerick, and some samples are test tested in an appropriate uh, laboratory in the UK. When a sample returns a positive test, the Owners, trainers are afforded due process, process, including a hearing at the Controls Committee and an appeal to the Control Appeals Committee. This can lead to significant time lags from the initial notification of the positive sample to subsequent publication of the results of the positive samples. Consequently, the number of cases published in a particular year can span more than one calendar year. Bornegon has confirmed to me that it is currently involved in a public consultation process with stakeholders with a view to putting in place legislation that will enable the publication of details of all adverse findings after positive re results have been returned by the laboratory and prior to consideration of such cases by the uh, control committee. It is envisaged that the information to be published will include and it's important, the identity of the greyhounds involved, the owners and the trainers. I am informed that Bornegon has recently, in a move towards greater transparency, confirmed a finding of positive results after the analytical phase and prior to the hearing of the control committee. The complete details in relation to the owners and the greyhounds will be available when the controls committee and the appeals committee, if appropriate, has concluded its deliberation. Could and I, I say, Justice Summers, uh, as well, we have recently uh, appointed, uh, the Board of Gone has recently appointed Director of Races, Governance and Compliance. I have also put on the board, as you quite rightly said, someone with very specific skills in relation to uh, a veterinary uh, qualified Thank you. person. And we're also, and this is very important, changing the legislation. The department officials are currently working on new regulations that needs to be changed and updated. And that's going to be brought before the House as soon as we possibly Thank can. Thank you. Deputy Wallace. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your answer, Minister. Um, a, a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, there does a, the, the, the way this thing has been done, I'm glad to hear that there's a review about to take place because stakeholders have come to me, owners of, of small owners, right, uh, who are really concerned about how things have gone on uh, up to now. And there's little doubt that there's been people involved. In, re in controlling how things are regulated in the greyhound industry that should not be involved in it. There's some serious conflict of interest as well where uh, the control board that you're talking about, the chairman of this particular board actually has dogs in training with a guy who has actually been found to be guilty of, of doping dogs. 
Now, I mean, how in God's name can this be allowed to happen? I think there has to be a serious look at who has been involved. And as you know, only uh, recently, in September, the Greyhound Board in Britain made a statement saying, warning English buyers from purchasing dogs in Ireland because they were drug ridden. Thank now, you. how bad is this? I mean, the thing... I'll let you back in again. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think we need to be very, very careful in relation to uh, uh, drawing a line across and saying this industry is full of uh, people that are breaking the law in, in relation. Well, that's what's been said, and that's the perception. I attend a lot of tracks up and down the country, uh, several functions, and I hear this all the time. But when you go into the detail, and I want to be quite clear, since we published uh, the Indicon report, and in that there are rec uh, several recommendations in relation to regulation. We're going to implement that. There is no room in this industry for anybody that's breaking the law. We're quite clear on it, and we're going to move as fast as we possibly can. And I want to assure the deputy, I want to assure you, and I also want to assure everybody in the, in in the industry, no stone will remain uh, unturned in relation to this. We will do everything possibly because they're either uh, involved in, in drugs, and if they are, they are to be dealt with. They have no place in the industry. We want a clean sport. This is being subsidised by taxpayers, subsidised by taxpayers in, in, in a very major way. And we want a very, very. So now that I, as Minister Responsible, want a very clear signal that we want this area uh, regulated to the uh, 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Can I, can I call that? Um, uh, I don't want to, I'm not saying at all that all dogs in Ireland are drunkards or not. In actual fact, the, the, the feeling on the street would be that it's actually the bigger trainers and owners who are actually uh, the most guilty in this area, and the small guys are, have far less access That's to drugs. That's speculation now, we can't forget okay, it's right. speculation. Um, but there's, why, why have we allowed a system to prevail where uh, it takes three weeks to get a result back from Limerick, whereas in Britain they can get results back in 48 hours? Now, uh, surely uh, that doesn't make for great transparency. Uh, the fines have been larger in Britain. The suspensions have been much clearer and, and, and more enforced. Uh, we have been very lax in how we've done things. And in actual fact, uh, the, the, the small trainers uh, feel that the playing field is not level. Uh, the big boys are getting away with murder, they have been shown favouritism at the expense of the industry in general and the small guy. And Minister, you. you might just ask, ask me this, uh, I, as I don't know the answer myself, do you know is, is Stanozol, which is kind of a new drug on the market, uh, is that being tested directly? Is there being tests done for Stanozol Thank in you. Greyhounds at the moment? I, I, I want to say one thing. Whether, whatever the view in the street might be one thing, and I hear views in the street. If I walk into a, a greyhound track, the first person I meet, they tell me something about it. Go down 10 yards down, down into the crowd and tell, they'll tell me the dead, dead opposite, not to be listening to them. That's the view in the street. The, the facts are totally different. I want, and that's why we uh, carried out a full assessment of the board. Uh, of in, uh, the board by Indicon. 27 recommendations were in that. Huge amount of related to uh, testing and doping. E every single aspect is being dealt with. And that has only been handed a few short months ago to us. And we're dealing, and we're now assessing it, as I repeatedly said, we're now uh, assessing that and putting an independent process that a total new um, board will be put in place, or a total new um, you know, board in relation to the, the drugs be put in place, and I will be appointing, be appointing that. It will be independent totally of Border Gone. It will be also be independent of small and big trainers, and we want a level playing field for everybody involved.